I thought I'd just update you on where we've reached with the scratch built version of the Americas. And certainly it's been much easier the second time around. Um, lots of the things that intimidated you um, or perhaps just gave you difficulty seem so easy this time around. One of the, um, the big positives that came out of it was when planking, particularly in the keel section, um, to let the plank stick beyond the frame so that when I come to put the actual keel in um, I can fit it into a rabbit uh, and I can do the same thing on the stern and on the stem. Um, the other thing is that um, as I had promised I would put the steelers on the flat section keeping away from the compound curves whether concave or convex which is the worst place you'd ever want to put a steeler. In terms of the complex curves, like at the stern here, we've produced these 2.5 millimeter um, strips instead of the 5, five millimeter strips. And at the same time, we sanded the sides of the planks to take up the, the change in shape of the plank that was there before. So we get a nice, neat, solid join. The same thing is going to happen in this area of the stern. In terms of the spacing, you will see that it's much more balanced now. And that's because we've put the steelers in early here and here, which has allowed us to keep a fairly even space, with the exception of the bow where it was always going to be short so the, the planks tend to all be tapered towards the bow. The one other thing I would say is using the West Indian mahogany it really is a fantastic wood. It's a little harder than the African uh, mahogany and so it's a little more difficult to bend but it's easy to work and easy to sand and I'll highly recommend it as a planking board. The other thing we've done differently is having followed the instructions to start from the deck and move down. Once we had passed the complex curve, we moved straight down to the keel and started working up. And we're going to stay that way until the two pieces meet. I'm not going to go and repeat the whole process over again, but just to give you an idea. We have a little steeler that we have to put in here, which we'll do once we sand it down. And the rest we can now use full boards, um, tapered to the front. And We thought we might need a steeler on the left side and then right side, but that turned out not to be necessary. The steelers, in fact, are right up in that corner where we had said we didn't want any steelers to be placed. You will remember that we used some termite fluid to treat the, the model when the frame was up and the deck was down. Well now we need to, before we close it up, treat the inside of the model. Um, and to, you need to do this before it gets too hard, before you close it up. So again I just, nice tall brush and put it in liberally. We have 10 strakes left to put on the boat and so we are going to treat the 10 strakes or planks on the inside and of course when it's all finished we'll treat the whole outside of the hill. We've also put a little X on the um, planks so that we know the treated side from the untreated side. And once, once we've closed it up and finally sanded the entire hull, just before we're about to paint it, we'll put the final coat of termite fluid on and then seal it with the first coat on the hull. And that really guarantees that there are going to be no pest destroying all your hard work for some time to come. And down we came to the last strake or plank to put on the model. And what an exciting point. A lot of consulting as to how we were going to approach it. Um, we rough cut 
um, a plank for the entire length and then took the caliper we cut that big plank up into three pieces and installed them each one separately um, it took a little while lots of adjustment with the pen sander was very very useful in, in doing this both in sanding the model and the strip there's a real sense of satisfaction of fitting the last piece And here we have it, so we just need to glue it up. And here she is, all finished, beautiful West Indian mahogany. Um, this is just really the first major sanding, about three and a half hours. Um, still a fair amount of cleanup to do. And then of course we'll put the stem, the keel and the stern on. The West Indian mahogany is really a beautiful, beautiful wood, almost like cedar. Um, a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be, um, but I'm told that given time it will turn into that rich, deep mahogany look that we're all accustomed to. And so it is time to start cutting the rabbit, um, starting with the, the stem. This proved pretty easy to do. Um, lots of sharpening with the chisels. I used an exacto knife to get a nice clean line actually on the stem itself. And just took my time fitting it the best I can. Um, I'll have more to say about that uh, later on. And then of course I'm continuing to use pins wherever it's possible uh, to pin these pieces on. Um, just to give them a little bit of strength and to make sure they don't move from the position that we had lined everything up beforehand. In terms of the keel, um, we were able to use my Proxon um, shaper or router table, um, as it's, which is probably a better term for it. And what this does is, because it's a nice clean piece, you get really a perfect uh, rabbit on both sides of the keel. Um, I did use half an hour epoxy to put this one in place um, because of the extra um, bend that the piece of juniper had. In hindsight, I think really that once the frame is made up, that those three pieces, the stem, the keel, and the stern post should be put on and the rabbit um, carved either as I've done it here on a machine um, or on the model so that when the planks are put in that you get a nice clean fit so my suggestion would be to ignore the instruction even to ignore what you've seen here and put those three pieces on once the major frame is made up well, here we have it, the scratch-built model using the West Indian mahogany as my planking uh, material, and it really has been a fantastic experience. Um, it's just so great to find a locally available wood, and it's now going to become my premium or premier wood to be used perhaps on the planking of the swan, but certainly on most of the boats going forward. Um, so what I'll do is encourage you to keep plugging away. In the next video, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the painting problems and issues and solutions that I found going forward. And so from Kevin Kenny, Trinidad and Tobago, keep modeling.